Should I go ahead and get started? All right. So welcome. And thank you today for joining us to share today's exciting news. I am Kimberly Andrews Espy, and I have the honor and pleasure of serving as the Senior Vice President for Research here at the University of Arizona. My office is home to our three outstanding university museums, the Center for Creative Photography, Arizona State Museum, and of course, where we are here today, U of A's Museum of Art, or commonly known as UAMA. My job is to advance research and scholarly discovery across our campus everything from astronomy to art. And our museums are central crucibles that bring together faculty scholars, students, and our communities together around one-of-a-kind photos, paintings, sculptures, archives, and the ancient artifacts that drive innovation on our campus. Woman Ochre is just one of these pieces, a work that is of immense scholarly value, reflecting the abstract expressionism movement at that time, also depicting de Kooning's departure from his artist peers. So we're going to have a lovely discussion today and walk through the exciting story of why we're all here. So I'm going to introduce my colleagues, and each of them will make some brief remarks, and then we'll open it up for questions. On my left is Meg Haggard, UAMA's interim director. And you guys sat in a different order than my list. And Olivia <laughs> Miller, UAMA's curator, curator. David Van Ocker, an art dealer from New Mexico, to whom we are so grateful for his immense work in this endeavor and Nancy Odegaard, the conservator, who you hear from later, was key to this story. On my right, we have President Robert C. Robbins, U of A's president, and we have myself, and then we have Brian C. Stone, UAPD's uh, chief, police department chief. So Meg, I will turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you all for being here today. On behalf of the University of Arizona Museum of Art, we just want to thank everyone and recognize that there are a lot of people who brought us to this moment today. We are fortunate enough with us to have some of the staff members that were here at the museum in 1985 when the painting was lost, and we are, we are thrilled that they are here with us to, to bring some closure to that, that moment. We also want to thank the press who helped us keep the story alive. It was the story that ran, um, or the coverage that we had in 2015 that really aided um, in bringing us to this moment. And I also want to recognize the fact that the painting has been outside of our care for almost 32 years, and the painting will need some work before we are able to bring it back to public display. And we are also going to be asking for help from the community in that conservation effort, so we are establishing a fund to help with that. Go ahead. Thank you all for being here. Um, I can't fully express how excited and happy and relieved we are at this moment. Um, one of the museum's key collecting areas is American and European modernism. Um, we have several works from key artists from the abstract expressionist movement of which de Kooning played a major, major role. Um, to, to have that work missing rendered our collection incomplete. Um, his role in that movement was seminal in that he was able to really reconcile um, the, the traditional figure of the woman in art uh, with the, the newfound importance on process, gesture, um, materiality of paint and canvas and texture, um, and it really set him apart from his contemporaries. And, and to have this work in our collection um, is hugely important, um, not just for the, the art historical value it holds, um, but for the staff and for, for the donor. Um, all of us who have worked at the museum over the years, whether or not we were here for the theft or um, whether or not we had ever seen the work in person, I had never seen it in person before, um, we all felt its loss and we all wanted it recovered. Um, to have it come back um, has done justice for the original donor, Edward Gallagher Jr., um, for the legacy and life of his son, Edward Gallagher III, for whom the painting was donated to our museum in honor of his memory as part of a memorial collection. Um, so to have it back is, there are, there are no words. Um, we're so grateful um, to David, to Buck, to Rick, to all of the people in four different states who were working really long hours to help us bring the painting safely home. We are just so beyond thrilled. So before I turn it over to David, please join me in a recognition of this. <laughs> I am, I am so humbled and, and thrilled 
and excited to be here, along with my two partners, Rick Johnson and Buck Burns, standing there in the back, that were equal to equal in this. And I also want to thank um, one of our customers, James, and Nancy and Maureen, who were three amazing people in Silver City who came into our store and said, I think that's a real de Kooning. And um, I, I'm shocked when we found out it was. <laughs> um, but I, I just can't tell you how thrilled I am to be here. It's just, it, this is amazing. I'm, I'm totally blown away. So. And Nancy Odegaard, our detective, <laughs> comes over here. Well, it's a great pleasure to be here, and this project is truly exciting. Um, I work as a professional art conservator for art and cultural heritage at the Arizona State Museum, and often get to work with colleagues uh, on occasion at other parts of the university. Uh, to be called in to help with this particular project was really terrific. Um, I'm not a specialist in oil paintings or in the de Kooning artworks, but as a professional conservator, we work to identify through a kind of a technical process. And I was very fortunate that the staff, um, particularly registrar, sent me the copies of the previous conservation and condition records that went with this painting here at, in, the, in the archives of the, of the museum. And because I could meticulously go through the process of examining the painting, and then compare the details that I saw with the damage that had been reported and the treatments that had report, been reported, it was easier for me to come to a conclusion as I went back to the front, um, and I'm sure people were a bit impatient with me because it took about two hours, but I just systematically convinced myself and when I finally got around to when we had the Tutani, the remainder uh, stretcher and the frame in place with the return painting on top of it, and we could all see the level of detail of the paint strokes that continued across both and the cut marks that matched perfectly, it was possible to come to the conclusion, at least for me and I think everybody in the room, that we had a perfect match. And so that was uh, truly an exciting moment um, and uh, the result of a process that I was fortunate enough to be part of. That's not a good example of art and science coming together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'll turn it over to our UA president, Robert C. Robbins. Uh, well, thank you for letting me be here. I, uh, I've gotten messages from my friends around the country who said, uh, less than three months on the job and I've already solved a 30-year uh, mystery <laughs> that I personally went out and tracked this painting down. And of course, I, I say all the time, I, I've got the best job in the world. This is one of the greatest uh, research universities in the world and we're really focused uh, on our students. And returning this painting is going to be a tremendous asset to the university to the students, to the researchers, and to the community to be able uh, to enjoy this painting. And it, in an ironic way, it, it brings a, a new light on this museum and the incredible work and the incredible collection of art that we have here. Uh, not only the museum here, but all the arts. We've got the Center for Creative Photography across the way. We've got the Poetry Center. We've got the Arizona State, uh, University, uh, State uh, Museum. And so this is just another uh, example of uh, the incredible value that art brings to the overall mission of the university and particularly our students. Uh, so I would love to say that I you know, find myself on third base and I hit a great triple, but of course I was just a pinch runner. I had nothing to do with any of this. I did come very early on and uh, do a tour and uh, just tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, facility we have here. We need uh, more, uh, more resources to improve the facility, but this is just a joyous occasion. And of course, uh, I got on third base because of David, Buck, and Rick. Thank you guys so much for everything you've done.
And for all of the incredible work has been mentioned before, uh, Chief, with your incredible department here working with the FBI and other law enforcement uh, agencies to, uh, to put this uh, puzzle together and to safely bring the work home. Uh, and for all of the uh, uh, incredible expertise here in the museum, who I know will, uh, I, I can tell you, the safest place to be in the entire world would be around this painting for a long time to come, <laughs> because they're, we're never going to let anybody uh, take it away from us. So uh, thank you all for being here, I, and Kimberly, thanks for inviting me uh, again to just participate in this incredible uh, celebration today. I think that's a great <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Um, as some of you may know, uh, this is coming full circle. 31 years ago, I was the um, person that got to investigate this case. So to see it come home, which people always ask me, did you expect it to come home? And I said, yes. I have always been very optimistic that someday she would find her way home because we have homecoming every year on campus. And I just knew that one day there was gonna be a homecoming. This is really an example of incredible cooperation at the local, county, state, and federal level. This hasn't died for 30, 31 years. And I tell the story many times that when there have been art thefts across the world and. Uh, and I hear of a recovery, I'll always contact somebody and say, is she there? And unfortunately, it wasn't uh, the case. I tell you that uh, about a week ago, a little over a week ago, when I got a call at four o'clock in the morning, and calls at four o'clock in the morning are traditionally not good. Um, <laughs> this one uh, made me smile, and I've been smiling for the last week and a half. I've said many times, 31 years ago, there were tears of sorrow and despair. And last Monday, when um, she came home with a pretty nice little convoy, I'll tell you, there were tears of joy and happiness. And I can't thank uh, the FBI, Interpol, um, my colleagues from New Mexico that helped us so much under a very short time period, and uh, to David and his crew. We've always said that crimes are solved by very good investigation, but we know that it makes a community and it has to be a partnership. And this was truly a partnership. Somebody saw something, they said something, and today she's home. Thank you. two crimes, two devastating crimes that occurred when the painting was stolen a while ago. First, our property, a priceless, world-famous painting was stolen from the university. But our community was robbed too. And with the return of this painting, we have the opportunity for new discovery from scholars all over the world to return to the University of Arizona and uncover its secrets. We have the opportunity for our thousands of students to come through and study firsthand the kind of art that's here at the University of Arizona. And lastly, we have the opportunity to share again this exquisite painting with our community. So thank you all very much. We'll open it up for questions. I think Gina's going to come on up. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, we will now open up for questions for the panel. Um, uh, Thank you, Mr. Stone. There's a $10,000 reward offer that will be the address found out. And it's still in the I, I really can't answer that yet because of the time period, and so we'll have to look into that still. So I'm sorry, so you don't know if the reward is going Right, because at that time, I believe it was being put up by a private party, so I'm not sure. Can you tell us about the condition of the painting? What's... I know there's restoration involved. What does that mean? Crease in it, what else? Yeah, there, there is damage um, that occurred at the time it was stolen. A blade was used to cut it completely around the frame. And at the end of that <coughs> process, there was a pulling and a tear. So there's some uh, torn area down near one corner. Uh, 
the painting appears to have been rolled tightly, and the horizontal creasing uh, probably was rolled on itself rather than with the paint outside. So that creasing, uh, the paint layers just by nature of the age of the painting, the technique used by the artist, that's a lot of paint, um, and the relining that took place uh, several decades ago uh, would contribute to a, a slight brittleness and that has just accelerated over time. So there's a, no doubt a, a kind of a, we didn't remove it from the, the new stretcher, so it's, um, it's stable as it sits, uh, as it was unpacked, there did not seem to be any uh, paint flakes that fell off. Um, as we carefully removed the added frame and looked between, the frame did not fit perfectly, so it was a little bit of a slow process, and in using a frame that did not fit properly, um, I'd say uh, large screws were used um, to, to hold it in place, and so there is some damage from that. So there's, there's a little bit of layers of just the age, but the act of stealing it, removing it from the museum in the frame caused considerable damage, and then reframing it to accommodate a commercial frame also caused some damage. So the details that will come further will, will be part of a, a, a very technical study that will go to much more close level. Is that? That would not be my specialty. Um, as, as I think I said, a, a professional conservator, I, I have a skill set that allows me to examine, sort of look for the problems. Um, one often doesn't, I like to say, we, it's difficult to go to a, an art museum with a conservator because we, we tend to look for the problems um, on every piece. Uh, and then we enjoy what the piece is. Uh, and that's, that skill set was useful in this process because I was looking for what matched, what didn't match, what were going to be problems. So the work that will go into the technical studies and the Stabilization treatment will should be done by a professional conservator familiar with oil paintings on canvas and particularly with the work of artists such as the painting of this time period. Um, David, I'm wondering how long was painting in your possession? And what did you do when you started um, to suspect that it might be a real painting? And also, uh, this is for the panel, um, is there any idea of where it was and what happened to it in the past three years? I can only guess on that, and I, I think it was in the same home for 32 years. I really do believe that. Um, we had, when we first saw the painting, I walked into the bedroom and, and saw it hanging there, and I thought, wow, you know, great, cool, mid-century painting. And I called my partner in and asked him what he thought of it, and he's like, I love it. And I'm like, great, we'll take it home. <laughs> and um, so we went out the next day, um, because the, the first day we saw it, we were just doing a preliminary, um, making an offer on, on the contents of the home. And so when... Uh, my partner Rick and I went out the following morning. We were just going to grab smalls and fragile things, and so we packed the back of the truck with lamps and some. They had some African art, and we the painting actually got kind of thrown in on top last. <laughs> and um, so we drove it back to the to our store and unloaded it with the intent of taking it home that evening. And um, the James, the first man that walked in the store, he, I think he was our first customer that day. And he immediately went over to it, and he, he wanted to touch it, and our Buck, our other partner, like, grabbed his hand and said, you know, don't touch the painting, you know, you put, put your finger through it. <laughs> and so, um, so he said, um, have you guys researched that? And we're like, no. He said, I think that's a de Kooning. And we're like, okay, yeah, right, sure. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he was pretty insistent that it was, and he left, and... Uh, 
probably an hour later, uh, Nancy Rivera, a friend of ours, came in and she looked at it and she went, oh my God, I think that's a real de Kooning. And um, we still, by this time I figured it was a study that, that someone had done of a de Kooning because the people who owned this house were artists. So we just assumed that. And then by the time Maureen, our, uh, another friend of ours came in, she just was really insistent that it was. And she took a picture of it and went home and got online and came back with some information for me and said, you really need to have, take a picture of it and send it to like the Kooning Society or something to have them look at it. Well, I went online to look up the Kooning Society and page one was nothing, page two, page three on Google. Page four, I came across Ann Ryman's story and I clicked on it and there on my computer screen was a picture of the painting and I called out to Buck who was in the other room and our friend Cheryl had been there and said, come in here. And so they, walked, they both walked behind the counter and I said, um, is that our painting? And at this point, Buck had taken the painting and put it in the bathroom because he didn't want people touching it. <laughs> so, it was stuck in the bathroom and he went and grabbed it out and took it around the, the corner and brought it in and our friend Cheryl looked and said, hot damn, I think that's the painting. <laughs> and so we blew it up and, and we were looking for, it had some runs and splatters and brush strokes and things and everything matched, everything. And right about then I just got this sinking feeling because I, I, I didn't know what to do. I had not a clue. I, I didn't know whether to call our local police. I, I just didn't know what to do. And um, so I said, well, well, we'll start with the museum. So I Googled the museum and pulled up the phone number and called them and got the receptionist and told her that I thought I had a painting that was stolen from the university about 30 something years ago. <laughs> and she said, hold please. <laughs> Next thing I know, I was on the phone with Olivia. So, and I was trying to convince her that I was not some crazy person who found something in Salvation Army, and you know, I got the cocooning. <laughs> and um, so, I, I really, in my mind, I did sound like a crazy person when I was talking to her because I was sure at this point, I was, I really was sure that it was it. So. Absolutely. Silver City? Silver City, New Mexico. But I'm going to ask you, uh, you were quoted as saying, we bought everything. And you were quoted as saying there's a lot of art in the home. Could it be that there were other pieces that were stolen, and did you buy all the art? We bought all the art that was left there. There was more. I'm not sure if um, the family took it, or the, the realtor was also given permission to take some pieces before we got in there. But I will tell you, there's one other painting that's kind of a mid-century piece that we really liked as well, so we we're going to take two paintings home. There's probably another 40 paintings that were done by the family, and they're really not very good. <laughs> they're really not. Although they might be worth something now. I mean, it's possible. But at the time, I took them for the frames because the paintings were pretty boring. But they are for sale in my store now. <laughs> Yes, the FBI, the FBI, who by the way, the FBI are fantastic people. They're, they're such nice folks. Yes, they're gonna come and photograph the other paintings, and probably not the family paintings, but the other the other mid-century piece they're gonna photograph and, and I'm not saying the ones from your store, the others that were taken. I you know, I don't know. I I, I would assume that they would do that, but but I have no idea. Yeah, they haven't let me I haven't been privy to that. Uh, two questions, one for the Chief and one for David. David, uh, people talk about you being a hero here at the U of A for the museum. Do you feel like a hero? hero? <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, this is just, I mean, we've just, we've returned something that was stolen. 
And I mean, that, that's just something everyone should do. It, it, it's just, it was the way we were raised, my family, and um, no, it, it, the dollar amount doesn't matter. You know, it was, it was something that was stolen. And I'm an Arizona boy, and my niece is a student at U of A. So, you know, it absolutely had to come back. There's just no question about it. But it, it uh, my two partners and I, we didn't even really, we didn't even have a discussion about it. It was, we just knew instantly that it had to come back. We, we made the phone call within, probably within five minutes of seeing the article. And um, it, 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 this is what, this is something that everyone should do. This should not be, this should not be unusual. It should be the norm, you know. No, uh, it, it's back home, but we can't talk about the investigation, but it is a reopened case with the uh, FBI. We turned the case over to them and maintained contact with them uh, for the last 30 years. Um, David, um, you said you has been in the same place for 31 years. Mm -hmm. um, what makes you say that? What makes you think that? Um, the home, everything in the home, there was, I think, maybe three objects in the home that were probably newer than, than uh, 1962. So I think that it just seemed to me that, that just from the, the dust and the, the where, where it was hung and um, everything in the home, they just, it seems like they had furnished and, and, you know, this was probably one of the newer pieces added to the home. Uh, but it just... Um, it just looked like it had been there for quite a while, and then we just kind of had our, some of our suspicions, you know, just our gut feeling when we, because as we, we purchased everything, you know, when you, when you purchase an estate like that, you sort of get to know the people that are there, because you're going through their papers, and you're, you know, you're, and, and their medicine cabinets, and all of that stuff, and I just, I just have a feeling that, that it was there, that, that it went from here to there and never moved. I, I could be wrong, but I, I think I'm, I'm a junior detective now. <laughs> Specializing in art theft, fine art theft. <laughs> 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 what would you take the thread up of David's story when you got the phone call and what your response was? <laughs> um, I, I will never, as long as I live, forget that phone call. <laughs> that's yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, I, was, I was sitting in my office, I was having a conversation with our archivist, Bill McCleary, and we have a set of the security walkie-talkies right near my office, so I can hear all the exchanges happening between security. And I hear, um, I hear the student, Khadijah, get on the line and say, Jim, I have a man on the phone who says he has our stolen painting. And Jim says, okay, transfer him to Olivia. So Jill looks at me and I look at her. <laughs> And, and she says, well, we remember this moment for the rest of our lives. And I just sat there and picked up the phone. And um, David says he's trying not to act like a crazy person. He was so calm and collected when he was on the phone. He probably didn't feel like yeah. that. But um, he was very articulate. He was very sort of matter of fact. He just said, you know, I bought the contents of an estate. I've been going through these things. I did some research, I came across an article from 2015, and I, I know I have your stolen painting. And, um, you know, at this point, I mean, I have no idea. <laughs> so I, I just started asking him to send me photographs, and I said, please send me an overall shot of the painting. I want lots of details so I can get an idea of the texture. I want the signature, um, and I, I also want photos of the back of the painting. And, um, thankfully, they didn't make us wait. Immediately, um, I believe Buck started emailing me photos, and every photo that came in, um, Jill and Chelsea Farrar, um, the other staff member there, um, we just got more and more excited, and we're like, we know we can't get in a car and go to Silver City right now, but we really want to get in the car and go to Silver City. And we wanted you to. <laughs> <laughs> um, once he said the back of the painting, we saw that it had a fixed piece of masonite on there. Um, it clearly was not a professional frame job. Um, Buck also sent a photograph of the side of the painting where we could see that it was not 
stapled well, you know, just things a framer never would have done had they known um, how to frame well. Um, so we immediately called Meg, who was in a meeting, and um, she was like, okay, we're sure we're not, it's, a, it's not a prank, and we said, no, it's not a prank, and then um, immediately we called UAPD, and then also emailed our FBI agent. So that was that first very chaotic <laughs> when did you go out to New Mexico? We went out the next day. Um, so it was, he called on a Thursday afternoon and we went out. Um, we left the museum around 6 o'clock on Friday. Mm -hmm. So we packed up a crate and all the packing materials we needed. And then um, we took two cars and, and went up there. Uh, and then at that point, um, we picked it up at their friend's house, and that's the other thing I'll never forget, is the um, wonderful and really shocking reception we received from a whole bunch of people who are having a party. Not by doing, <laughs> honest to God, I, not by doing. Um, it was just, it, I mean, we didn't know what to expect. We'd never seen the painting in person, and, and all of a sudden there's all these wonderful, really happy people there, so excited to see us and excited to show us the painting and see our reactions. and. Um, and we went there, and um, you know the the sheriffs helped us, um, you know, just just be on scene there, and they helped um, escort the painting back to the station and, so and was secure it. Party going on? Yes, unrelated to the painting. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was it was the, our friend where we had dropped the painting off because the the FBI had told me not to take it back to the store and to put it somewhere safe because it had been behind my sofa all night long. And um, so we drove around town for, Rick and I drove around town for about half an hour because the banks weren't open and it's early morning in Silver City and we just couldn't figure out where to drop it up and nobody was answering their phone. I called my attorney, he wasn't in. I called a friend of ours, they weren't in. So we went to another friend who, who uh, agreed to hide it for us. Um, until we could convince these guys to come get it. And, um, and he said, well, you know, my brother-in-law's in town and my sister and my brother-in-law and two other friends and we're having a barbecue tonight. And so I'm like, just hide it, you know, and we'll work the rest of it out later. So that's what they walked in on was the barbecue. <laughs> Which was not my barbecue. We're gonna take one more question. So what, what was your response to the thing when you saw the <laughs> Priceless. I don't know if you want the exact word. It was priceless. <laughs> it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Um, I, I knelt down in front of the painting. I mean, I had not, I've only known this painting through photographs. I've done countless presentations on this painting. Um, and I've talked about it to classes and, you know, the Arizona Bar Association. I mean, we, we, we've come to know the frame really well and um, the fragments, but I was just, I was absolutely in awe and I just wanted to soak in everything I could of the texture of the painting because that's what I've never gotten to see in the photographs is um, all that wonderful paint and, and every drip and, and the wonderful, you know, teal patch in the shoulder. Um, so I just, you know, was, and, and there was all these people there. I'm <laughs> really excited. So it was a little, it was overwhelming for sure, um, but I was, I was just trying to to remember everything I could of the painting in that moment. You thought it was it? Oh yeah, absolutely. The room, the room yeah. was just thick with electricity. It, it, you, we all felt it, and I mean, it, and it, everyone just became emotional. And it, I mean, it was just such a fantastic experience, you know. And and seeing. Olivia and, and the look on her face and tears and and it just made us all we just all lost it. It, it, it was I will, like I said I'll never forget that moment. It was amazing. But you still haven't answered the question. Yeah. What, did you, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> we do have it on tape. I will never forgive you. <laughs> My first. <laughs> um, in the words of Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, it was holy shit balls. <laughs> it was. And then she turned and said, that is not my official statement. <laughs> Which now it is. It is now. <laughs> <laughs> so 
thanks so much, everybody. At this time, um, two things are available. You can stay up and do individual one-on-ones with the panel. We also have other museum staff um, who you can interview if you want. They are around the room. We'll, we'll identify them. We also have a chance um, for people to see the work if you'd like. For if everyone can do that, you can do whatever order you'd like. At that point, please proceed to the lobby. Um, we'll give you a number, and we're going to take people back one by one just for the safety of the piece. Um, you will not be able to bring lights into the room. It is already lit. Um, and so museum and UA staff will help get you there. I am going to ask, please, if you have a video camera, if you can collapse your tripod before you walk it downstairs just because there is art everywhere. So just be conscious of your movements around the arts. Um, and thank you so much for being here with us.